A very good evening and welcome to the Buddhist Mahavira's uh, Facebook page. We are going live this evening and we have a special guest uh, from the United States, Abante, who will be speaking to us on our new series that we have started on the five hindrances uh, towards meditation and enlightenment. And the first of the series uh, is talking about Kama Chanda or sensory desire. And I would now like to introduce you to our Bante, Bante M. Uh, Chandima Tera from uh, California, USA. Welcome, Bante. Welcome to our show, uh, the Buddhist Mahavira's Facebook page. Uh, good evening to everyone uh, of, uh, um, of the devotees of uh, Malaysia Buddhist Mahavira. Uh, let me let me read uh, Bante's profile for those of you. I think many of you don't know or never have met Bante before. Even for me, this is the first time I'm meeting him. Uh, so let me read his profile so that we get a better understanding of Bante. Uh, Bante Chandima is a Sri Lankan Buddhist monk from uh, the Buddhi Vihara in Santa Clara in California, USA. Uh, he became a novice monk in 201 uh, at the Uluvitake's Jaya Subhanarama Temple in Gale, Sri Lanka and, and entered Upasampada or had his Upasampada in 2009. Uh, he obtained a Rajakya Pandita or the Royal Scholar degree from the Vidyodhya Pirivana and a BA degree from the Buddhist and Pali University of Sri Lanka. He also worked as a translator for the Sri Lanka National Institute of Education and later served as the head of, primary uh, of the primary section of translators for Singhala, Tamil, English, Hindi, Bengali, Urdu, Pali and Sanskrit. I presume Bante knows all these languages as well. And <laughs> Bante is currently based, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in the Silicon Valley in California for the last seven years, uh, since 2013, uh, whilst working as a Western Buddhist missionary uh, and a psychological instructor. Uh, he wrote books in various Asian, European, and South American languages to promote the Buddha's teachings all around the world. So it gives us great pleasure this evening to have Bhantis uh, Chandima with us, uh, who talk about the first of the five hindrances, Kama Chanda. Bhante, would you like to start, please? Yes. <clears throat> Namo Tese Bhagavatu Arehatu Sangmaha Sangbuddhese Namo tese bhagavato arehato sangma sangbuddhese Namo tese bhagavato arehato sangma sangbuddhese Buddham dhamma sangham namasam Good evening, dear devotees of Buddhist Mahavihara. And I'm so happy, I'm so joyful and gleeful to meet every one of you with another, with a beautiful Dhamma sermon of the Buddha. So, every week in the evening of uh, uh, Sunday at 8.30 or if you have such kind of a sermon. The Buddha always said that among all the hearings in this world, hearing the Dhamma is the greatest hearing. There is no any hearing which is greater than that. Why among all the hearings, hearing the Dhamma is the greatest here? Because it makes your dislike a happy one, a comfortable one, a peaceful one, a successful one. It makes your next lives, the upcoming lives, happy ones, comfortable ones, and successful ones. 
So that's why Buddha said, hearing the Dhamma is the greatest hearing. So you are going to listen to Dhamma. And we are going to discuss today about Kama Chand. Kama Chand, uh, one of the five hindrances, Pancha Nivaranas. Kama Chand means the, uh, the hindrance of sensual desire. Kama Chand Nivaranas. We are going to start. Dear Dhamma friends, Nivarana. Why, what is the meaning of this term Nivarana? Dear Dhamma friends, Nivarana means the cover. The, the cover, what kind of a cover? A cover which prevents us a nuisance, a disturb, a hindrance that prevents us from avoiding wrong actions, from cultivating good actions, from purifying the mind. Since these hindrances they cover us, they discourage us, they pull back all of us from uh, practicing, uh, <clears throat> practicing these three things, avoiding wrong actions and cultivating good actions and purifying the mind. So they are called as Nivaranas. There are five kinds of Nivaranas like that. And among all those five Nivaranas, the first one is Kama Chand, the hindrance of sensual desire. Dear Dhamma friends, <clears throat> what is Kama? Kama means liking, the desire. So there are five kinds of karmas. According to the Buddha's explanation, there are pancha karmas. What are the pancha karmas of us? First, first karma is the the desire, sensual desire that we do have for the forms. Second one is the sensual desire that we do have for the sounds. Third sensual desire is the, uh, the sensual desire that we do have for the, for the others. Fourth sensual desire is the sensual desire that we do have for the taste. Fifth sensual desire is the sensual desire that we do have for the touches, the sensations, the feelings, bodily feelings. These are the pancha karmas, the five kinds of sensual desire. So if Chanda means the nature of liking them, liking the pancha comments, the nature of addiction to them, addicting to the pleasure of pancha comments, five sensual desires. So uh, in that sense, Kama Chanda means the addiction, the, <clears throat> the extreme liking of, uh, of us that we do have towards the five karmas, five sensual desires 
the addition the uh, of the form sound order taste and at the same time bodily feelings then kama chandani varna means the hindrance of sensual pleasures dear dumb friends so <clears throat> the buddha describes the uh, the addiction the uh, hindrance of sensual pleasures in a beautiful uh, simile that simile is the monkey and the sticky puppet the monkey and the sticky puppet the buddha says that there was a monkey in the himalayas that means it was a mountain so while it uh, <clears throat> Uh, there was a hunter who was eyeing to catch this monkey he thought of a trick and he made a puppet and he he made that puppet with a sticky bird line that means the gum of jackfruit then he placed he placed that puppet on the way we are this monkey was going here and there then what happened this monkey so this sticky puppet went closer to the sticky puppet and so that it is not reacting to it to the monkey so what it did it hit this to check the sticky puppet with its right hand then its right hand got stuck on the right hand of this sticky puppet to save it from the sticky puppet it hit the sticky puppet with its left hand left hand also got stuck then he hit the monkey with its head his head also got stuck then to say we say it hit the sticky puppet with its right leg then it hit the monkey he hit the sticky puppet with its left leg it was caught in the sticky puppet it got stuck then what happened the the hunter came it easily caught up the monkey killed it and so on. dear dumb friends who is the monkey what is the sticky puppet and who is the hunter monkey is us we we have a lot of sensual desire addiction to sensual desire we are beings with the defilement strong defilement of craving the adam friends we are since we are in, while living with such kind of a nature inside us we meet we meet we encounter various kinds of uh <clears throat> 
these panchakamas in the outside world. Actually, dear Dhamma friends, inside them there is no any karma. The, when you meet a form, the form is form. It's a combination of four dhatos, four elements. And they are always changing. Uh, they, are, they are always uh, belong, they always belong to the nature of impermanence. But inside our mind, while encountering them, we react with karma. We react with craving. That's why they become panchakamas, objects of panchakamas. So we encounter these five things, as I mentioned you, forms, then after that sounds, odors, taste and feelings, sensation of the body. When we encounter them, they are the sticky puppets. They are the sticky puppets. So we the monkeys, we get stuck. We, since we have that craving, since we have that, uh, because of craving, we develop another one, aversion. And for these two, there is a base, ignorance. Since we have these three things, Raga, Dvesh, Moha, they are called as Akusala Moolas, the basis of all the defilements. Since we have them, what we do? We hit those sticky puppets with our right hand, with our left hand with our head and with our right leg, with our left leg and then we get stuck. And who is the evil one? Mare. Oh, the Mare. We become the victims of Mare because of these Nivaranyas, especially because of this Kama Chanda Nivarana. In realms of the addiction to sensual desires. The Buddha says, if we see three things, three natures of these Nivaranas, we can come out of it. Asad Adinam Nisaran. If we understand when we encounter various kinds of panchakamas in the outside world, five kinds of sensual, uh, sensual, uh, the objects that create sensual desire. If we understand, if we accept, yes, they have, they, uh, they develop inside us a sensual desire. But uh, a happiness, a pleasure. But actually, that pleasure is baseless and it's mental. And it's that pleasure. We have created it with the notion of permanence. Let me explain in brief. When you meet things outside, you take, uh, let's say, um, there is, so, some of you, a man sees the, the hairs, of a lady, the, the whole uh, set of hair of a lady. Then, then what happens? He see the whole combination of hair as one thing, one unit. 
but actually when we you divide the the uh, they state they are formed as a combination of hairs but we don't catch up that reality with the mind and when it when we go deeper even the even one hair it is consisted it 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 was created with the four elements patavi apo tejo vayu solid element liquid element yeah then uh, heat element gas element and when they get together it's in the nature of changing all the time it's changing but we don't catch up that reality we develop a desire but sometimes uh in the the real nature of them is uh actually there is nothing to claim if you see the reality of these uh <clears throat> so this hair you don't get addicted it is always uh subjected to sweat so there is sweat all over this hair and there is dust all over this hair and there are various kinds of other disgusting things which we do have with with inside our hairs but what we see is the thing that we see as an appearance we we absorb it as a reality but what we see is not the reality but since we see it with an ignorance we don't uh we we think since we think it as a whole one unit we develop sensual desire towards it ourselves. so but the reality comes out in a uh, incident like this let's say uh, the wife uh, on the previous night the husband sees the beautiful hair of his wife and he praises oh how what a beautiful uh, combination hair combination of hair you do have so beautiful so beautiful on the following day she cooks she cooks a porridge or a curry and then when she brought that curry or the porridge to the table uh, when the husband is about to eat that porridge or the curry he sees one of those beautiful hairs on the porridge or the curry what happens now is it beautiful no now he sees the reality he shouts at the wife come here come here can you see you can't even cook the curry or the porridge with uh, properly cleanly look what have you done the, your hair is inside this porridge then it is good if the wife gives this answer right this porridge or the curry is tasty and uh the beautiful hair has fallen on the curry or the porridge so it the porridge or the curry it has become be- both beautiful and tasty so eat the tasty beautiful curry tasty beautiful porridge so somehow this is the reality uh, all these not only the hair the whole 32 parts of our body 
even though from outside we think uh, as a combination of them we think even though we mentally think these things are beautiful these things uh, uh, by seeing so uh, even though we react either with uh, desire either with craving either with aversion uh, either with uh, delusion the reality is reality they are real nature is actually we, when we see the real nature of them we the, definitely we don't get cling to it don't get cling to it so instead we develop a very strong feeling of disgust that's why the buddha named them as 32 parts to develop the condemnation feeling disgust feeling so that's why there is separate practice called dvatisna kar bhavana contemplation on 32 uh, disgusting parts of the body is there so when you practice that meditation practice these this sensual desire goes away when you see the reality of all these 32 parts that nature goes away so <clears throat> that uh, inside addiction to the sensual desire gradually uh, ceases so that is one way how how can you how you can come out of this addiction to sensual desire so let's let, let's suppose as i mentioned you so when you partisan the whole body and when you start observing part by part kesa hair loma so bodily hair uh, nakha so nakha means the uh, so uh, so uh, near and then after that nakha uh, danta the the teeth then uh, tacho the the skin like that the whole 32 parts if you go one by one and observe them observe them uh, so one by one individually if you observe them according to the real nature of them the nature of disgust the nature of uh, uncleanliness then our mind starts to get away from the darkness and it's, uh, it's it starts to see the light of truth then the mind gets away from um, gets away from the the addiction to sensual pleasure at the same time it starts to develop the wisdom another way of uh, observing them is objects as in of impermanence it, uh, the main two techniques to come out of karma chanda nivarana uh, the uh, hindrance of the addiction to the sensual pleasure is observing the things as impermanent so <clears throat> Uh, basically all the forms all the sounds all the odors all the tastes and all the feelings that we encounter they are realities dear dhamma friends even while we are experiencing them they are in a process of continuous changing so since they are uh, 
they are subjected to the uh, they are formed with the four elements uh, patavi apo thiduvayo they are continuously changing so the form let's say let's take form the form that we see now we can't see it once again in the next form in the next time in the next moment you can't see this very form in the next moment when you see with your eyes the form is totally changed in the last moment this very form that we see it is not there it was not there so uh, but we can't see the, this reality through our eyes of through our naked eyes that's why we develop sensual desire to stay but dear lama friends the uh, so in berkeley university in 1980s according to my memory uh, they developed a, uh, they developed a scientific instrument called bubble chamber its objective was to measure the speed the rising and passing away speed of an atom after developing that instrument they checked how fast an atom rises and passes away within a millisecond do you know the answer one after 22 zeros that's the number that faster the uh that that is the speed of an atom within a minute within a millisecond which it takes to arise and pass away. if we see this reality we understand that we there is nothing to develop any addiction on these forms same thing with the sounds you can't see hear the same sound twice so about the odor is the same about the taste the same about the bodily feelings it is the same reality then uh, <clears throat> how about the mind then is the mind eternal no the buddha says even the mind it is also impermanent the mind that we use to see things with sensual dis desire dear dumb friends once monks ask how fast this this mind arises and passes away the buddha gave a beautiful answer let's say there are four arches very strong arches they come to a ground an open ground and look they direct for, at the four directions they face the four directions with four very strong bows and very smooth long uh, long range that means uh, long range traveling arrows let's suppose they shoot at the sky there is a fast runner with them that fast runner 
runs and catches all those four arrows without letting them to hit the ground. The Buddhas, can you imagine the speed of the prana? The monk said, Oh, the Buddha, oh my Lord, even catching one, even catching one arrow is impossible to think the speed about the speed. How about catching four? The Buddha said, This world, this world, this earth, it turns, it turns more faster than that speed. Then Buddha said, The deity who, who controls the deities on this earth, his speed is faster than that. More faster than, than that deity speed, the moon is turning. More faster than the moon's turning, uh, the deity. The speed of the deity who controls the deities of the moon is higher and more faster than him turns the sun more faster than that the deities of the sun the the main deity in the sun can can travel more faster than that dear dumb friends the mind arises and passes away. The mind arises and passes away. This is the reality. When you understand uh, the 32 parts of the body as unclean parts or changing parts, impermanent parts, and <clears throat> when we understand that we can't experience the same nature of this any form, any uh, sound, any odor, any taste, or any uh, feeling, any bodily feeling, any sensation twice. Kama Chande. We can come out of this hindrance of Kama Chande and we can develop in the path of Dhamma by avoiding the negativities, by cultivating the positivities, and by purifying the mind. And gradually, by that way, we can step in the path of the Buddha and attain real peace, real happiness, Nibbana, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you, Mante, for excellent sharing. Uh, I think uh, now it's question time. I'm waiting for questions from the audience. Um, but I think I had one question earlier, uh, but it's not posted them. I think I still remember the question. Uh, the question was something like this. Even though we know uh, that sensory uh, desire or pleasures uh, are impermanent or, or maybe, maybe not good for you, why do human beings still get attached to it all the time? Because, because of the things of permanence. Yeah, so we know. They, we know, they still, we know. yeah, uh, because of the sense of permanence. See, since it has not become, a, since it has not become an experience, there are three kinds of wisdoms. So, First kind of wisdom is Sutame Panya. You can listen that something is impermanent and think, uh, and, but still, you don't really understand whether that is impermanent or not. And you can intellectually think more, and you can understand more about impermanence, but still, it is limited to the intellectual level. We need to experience 
the impermanence through meditation. That's how we can come out of it. If not, it's hard. Intellectually, by thinking intellectually, we can uh, control, but it is just like a practice of um, like this. You take a rubber ball and you keep it inside the inside water until you hold it, it is there. But when you uh, let it go, it comes to the surface level once again. That's like that. So if you if you don't uh, experience the impermanence through meditation practice, it is limited to the intellectual level and it does, it does do little good to eradicate the defilements. It helps to suppress the defilements, but it do a little to eradicate the defilements. So uh, we need to have not Sutta Mevanya, the the wisdom that we obtain just by um, listening to something or reading to something, uh, not chinta me panya, the philosophy, uh, not to the, we should not limit our wisdom to the wisdom of uh, philosophical thinking, deep thinking. We need to have bhavana me panya, we need, that means we need to have, we need to develop the it in the we need to experience it through our meditation practice we need to experience it that's how we can come out of it thank you Bhante. i think that was quite quite clear your answer was quite precise i think uh, the the whoever asked that question earlier was uh, was able to uh, comprehend what you had mentioned um so it's the experiential learning part that's very important in, in terms of wisdom, right? Yes. Uh, I think you also had mentioned something about Mara and then you just uh, deviated from something else. Could you just uh, explain a little bit about the concept of Mara in this uh, Kama Chandra Bhante? Oh, right. Yes. Um, so uh, actually these Panchakamas, so these forms, sounds, odors, and taste, and all the feelings, they belong to the Mara. They belong to the Mara. So, uh, so they, uh, they are the weapons of Mara. So, <clears throat> we, if we do have the craving, if we continue to uh, react with the craving, what will happen is, we will become the victims of those Mara's objects. So when we react craving, when we react with craving towards those Panchakamas, so we become the victims of Mara, the evil one. Then, uh, then if we continue to stick, if we continue to uh, uh, react with craving, an aversion until the death, what will happen is we lose the chance to come out of the trap of Mara and then what will happen is uh, we'll be throughout the samsaric life, we'll be under his control. He can do anything uh, as he wishes for us. Bhante, are you saying Mara as in a being or is it a concept? Oh, there are, oh, in that way, there are five things called Maras. There is this, uh, so, there are five Maras. Uh, first Mara is Deva Putta Mara. Deva Putta Mara means uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the being, the divine being. Uh, who lives in uh, so Paranimita Vahavati level of uh, divine world? So, uh, so that Mara is the Deva Putta Mara, that is the divine being. And then, after that, uh, second kind of Mara is after Deva Putta Mara, 
there is this kilesa mara uh, kilesa mara means so <clears throat> kilesa mara means the defilements our own defilements work as a mara sankilesa mara so uh, our own defilements they are also a mara uh, like that there are five things i think uh, this is not the time to explain them uh, completely so not on uh, what you need to understand is not one thing uh, not one being is mara uh, not only yes there is one divine being called mara and he he has his own divine world and at the same time our own defilements and there are another three things uh, which are called as mara too yeah. yeah i think that's where the confusion lies because sometimes we it's uh, made reference to the being and sometimes i think it's made reference to uh, the concept of you know uh, of uh, of consciousness or whatever it's you know it's called uh, maybe we'll have to study this in uh, depth at a certain next uh, dhamma sermon bhante yes uh, definitely I, i will uh, next time i will give you yeah, a sounds, sounds like a very interesting subject because i think many people are sometimes confused or they get baffled by the word mara when they see it they, or some people think it's a, a being that's you know especially when you read the life of the stories of the buddha you know there's mara coming in and disturbing him while he's meditating or his daughters coming in yeah yeah you know? that is they put the mara yeah, yeah. Right. So let's let's spend some time on, soon, and we'll discuss this in in detail. Uh, by the way, there's another question from the audience. All right. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> this is the way how you can uh, uh, meditate on the thirty-two parts of the body. But very important, you need. you must have a good qualified teacher and uh, when you practice this uh, very important uh, to train under a particular teacher that's so important so uh, there are two parts of the body so when uh, when we observe them we need to think let's say here here when we observe them so we need we need to understand we have to um we have to observe and we have to ponder we deeply like this so the nature of this hair is disgusting it's sweaty dusty and so always at the same time it is impermanent and it brings suffering since it is impermanent it brings suffering and inside this yeah there is no something something that i can tell as i my oh my soul right i my oh my soul so like that you observe the whole 32 parts and yeah you ponder on them they are disgusting uh, they are they are odorous uh, so uh, they are so there there are several things that you need to uh, understand right so first thing is the combination it is changing then the odor the reality uh, when you observe them properly the odor is also disgusting so <clears throat> because of the change in nature it is it has it it doesn't have the control of us so it is not we can't call it a self i mean you can't call it as i so you have to think like uh since this is um this is uh this is uh this gives us bad order right it's uh it's disgusting since it is always uh going to uh subject to uh change subject to uh become old and get vanish 
right it is impermanent so uh, since it is impermanent it's subject to suffering since it is subject to suffering and not under our control it is not i mine or oh mine like that you need to ponder disgusting and it is changing impermanent and it's suffering then it, it's not i not not i my or my soul thank you bante i think uh, that should be enough uh, in terms of uh, answering a question for from our dot if you still have uh, any more questions or you still have queries you can still send it to us uh, yes. you, can email, uh, you can email it to us at info at buddhismahaviara.org or you can whatsapp the, the question to uh, plus six zero one one two six eight nine six one two three it's on our facebook page anyway so uh, for the devotees who have questions you can forward it to our email or to our whatsapp uh, what is this number uh, I think we have come to the end of uh, this evening's sharing, Bante. Uh, can we now uh, observe the Anumodana? Yes. So All right. Uh, I think I took a little bit more time, right? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's share all the positive energy that we accumulated with all the divine beings. May they gain this positive energy. May they prosper wherever they are. And may they bless you, help you, and protect you. Thinking like that, let's share the positive energy with them, reciting the stanzas of Akasa Taja Bhumata together. Akasa Taja Bhumata Devanaga Mahitika. Punyan tang anumuditwa Chirang rakang to look a sasanang Chirang rakang to desanang Chirang rakang to mang parang Let's share this positive energy with all the departed relatives of your family. May all of them gain this positive energy and at the same time may they uh, wherever they are born uh, if they are born in bad realms may they be free if they are born in good realms may they achieve better and one day meeting the being fortunate to meet this precious dhamma we practice it and attain real peace nibbana right let's recite Idam me nyati nang hutu Sukita huntu nyatayu Idam me nyati nang hutu Sukita huntu nyatayu Idam me nyati nang hutu Sukita huntu nyatayu by the power of all this positive energy, may this world become free of coronavirus pandemic. And may, this, may all the beings in this world be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you. May no troubles come to you. May all the good happen to you. Practicing this Dhamma with wisdom, with understanding continuously. With determination. May all of you attain real peace, real happiness, purification of mind, Nibbana. Please concentrate. Abhivadana silise nichang badha pachayinu chataru dhamma vatanti Ayubhannu sukham balam Ayurarugya sangpatti Sagya sangpatti mevache Atho nibbana sangpatti Iminatehi samidhyatu Sadhu 
사두 사두 스키호트 이요 스키호트 같이 and uh, thank you for conducting the anumodana it's very well done uh, it got my hair standing literally very well done uh so on behalf of the committee of management of the buddhist mahavihara uh, as well as all the monks at the buddhist mahavihara uh, and also to the sponsors uh, we like to take this opportunity to thank both bante uh, chandima for taking time off, time off from his busy schedule and as a matter of fact uh, it's 6 a.m i think now in uh, california where bante is even though for us it's going to be about 9 uh, 9 30 it's 6 a.m. Bante had to wake up very early to do this Dhamma sermon. I think one of the first few times he has got to get up so early to do a Dhamma sermon. But thank you so much, Bante, for taking your time and uh, sparing your energies with us. I think and uh, I would like to thank especially Bante Damnoini there. Yeah, Bante uh, uh, and Tilak too for um, inviting me. Uh, may you both be well and happy too. Thank you. And also to our listeners, so thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you had an enlightening uh, experience with Bhante Chandima. And we hope to have him back with us uh, in one of the next few months, uh, uh, as soon as we get time to slot him uh, on his busy schedule. Uh, even though you know he's quite a young monk, I spoke to him this morning and I found that he's doing a lot of good work uh, back in the States. So let's hope we can find him uh, a slot to bring him back to our Buddhist Mahavira's Dhammadana series again. So thank you, Bante. Uh, good morning, and to the rest of you, uh, good evening, and have a pleasant evening. And Sadhu. Sukhi hotu. Sukhi hotu. Namo Buddha. Sukhi hotu. <laughs>